us up, boy.
two going in or what? Let's do it. Where were we on that other? Hey, uh, where it is someone put down that loudmouth Magni? Wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Would that be a good thing or a bad thing? Bad thing for you when his daddy finds out. But one less Aesir farting around suits me just fine. In fact, next upgrade is on the house. Really? No. Wow. What's it gonna be this time? Hey, nobody's twisting your arm. Now you're talking. Another time, then.
Atreus, here! Yes, Father! Full of stories. When will you tell one that entertains? I beg your pardon? He just insulted you. Yeah, I got that. So you want a corker, do you? Very well, my brothers. I'll tell you the story of Runia, the brawler. The real story. Or I can just tell you the story later. What's got you all bum-fuzzled over there? Get going! Now then, that story I started earlier. I was to tell you the story of Hrungnir the Brawler. The real story. There was a huge battle, right? His shrine had him in the middle, fighting off Aesir. A pretty story, but... No. Hrungnir, you see, was born with neither head nor heart. So the giants had to complete him with stone. He was strong, to be sure. But also a perfect simpleton. Odin met him wandering in Midgard one day. 
found him so amusing, so harmless, so gullible, that he invites him back to his palace in Asgard. There he gives Hungnir his fill of mead, and goads him into all manner of boasts and antics. All for the amusement of the court. I was there. I saw the Aesir laugh as Hrungnir leapt upon his shield and swore he'd kill us all and take our womenfolk back to Jotunheim. And does he laugh? Oh no. Thor takes one look at the drunken stone buffoon and brings down Mjolnir on his head so hard that he's got chunks of Hrungnir in his own skull to this day. So startled by the face full of rock, he doesn't notice Hrungnir's body topple right onto him with a sickening crunch. And again, the roars of laughter echo through the palace halls. That's an awful story, Mimir. Nothing like the one's mother told me. Let that be a lesson, my son. Truth is seldom so pretty as myth and legend. Come, boy. What's got you all bum-fuzzled over there? Get going!
Focus up! Need more time! Two going in or what? You hitting the road or chewing the fat?
Atreus, to me! What's got you all bum-fuzzled over there? Get going! I have a question. If Ymir was the first giant, where did he come from? In the beginning, there was Ganungagon, the great boy. There were no realms there, only primordial forces. There was fire, and there was ice. And there in the void, they met and produced... Water? More than water. The mystic lifeblood of something entirely new. From this water, Ymir took form and became a being of pure creation and chaos, mother and father to all that came after. Even the Aesir? Aye. Every god, man and beast came first from Emir's flesh. Though it was the Aesir who thought themselves so superior that they should hold dominion over the rest of creation. It was Odin who took arms against his creator and spilled Emir's lifeblood with his spear. A necessary evil, he would say, to bring order to the realms. From Ymir's torn flesh, Odin would fashion the realm of Midgard for his own. Called himself All-Father, as if he was the creator, and not the creator's destroyer. A small, covetous tyrant. Ymir? Hmm? Oh, sorry, my boy. Ah, uh, you know, I think it best we just end <laughs> this.
Fuck you! 